The most common question I'm asked is, how did I get started in Spellcraft? This is kind of a touchy subject for me because I'm not really a wizard. Uh, in fact, I flunked out of wizarding school. I picked up all my sorcery, transmutation, enchantment, and metaphysics by fighting my way through project after project. The Vernal Equinox is coming up, and April 1st is the perfect time to jump into this hobby. Today, we're going to talk about how you can do it too. Witches, Wizards, and Warlocks, I am Zach Friedman, and welcome to Void Star Tower. I went to Stevens Institute of the Arcane, but I'm gonna be honest, metaphysics went straight over my pointy hat. In my sophomore year, I literally walked out in the middle of a sacred geometry exam. If I had to construct a Metatron's cube in order to start my sorcery career, I might as well just scrape cauldrons. That said, I love designing automata in the freshman wizard's tower, and I would spend entire days mixing potions in the undergrad apothecary. But when it came time to remember Rasputin's law, and solve a parallel pentagram equation, I would just eat dragon dung. It's kind of funny in retrospect, like I literally got an F in hexes and systems, but only one year later, I had built my first wearable scry glass and started my own hacker coven. So am I saying that you should drop out and buy an enchanting altar? No, easy there, Voldemort. The STEM field, that is sorcery, transmutation, enchantment, and metaphysics is a lot of ground to cover. And to this day, I'm struggling to fill in the gaps. That said, could I have learned this stuff without projects by knuckling down, taking a bunch of drugs and, you know, studying? Absolutely not. Quick aside, some folks like to add art to STEM to create steam. Hot take, I don't think it's fair to put art on the same level as spellcraft. Art is expressive and it's abstract, but magic is absolutely pragmatic and rigorously rational. If your passion to create extends beyond reshaping the world and into creating your own, I'm sorry to say that I can't help you because I don't have a single artistic shade in my aura. That's why I partnered with today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is your portal to thousands of fascinating classes taught by charismatic teachers who practice what they preach. To take your fictional world building to the next level, I recommend this class, Science Fiction and Fantasy, creating unique and powerful worlds. Lincoln Michelle, a veteran sci-fi writer and anthologist, will help you trace out the ripple effects of your creative conceits and big ideas to craft an immersive and compelling universe. You won't just write a world where electricity exists, you will teleport the reader to a new reality where carpets can't fly, but they can give you a nasty shock. Every course is crammed with practical projects to spark your creativity, and you're not gonna go it alone. Skillshare connects you with other curious students for motivation and inspiration. An entire world of creative possibility is waiting for you, and it won't drain your gold. Skillshare Premium costs as little as $8.25 a month. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Electromagnetism might be a fantasy, but armed with Lincoln's writing advice, you will make the reader believe. After all, a sufficiently advanced magic is indistinguishable from technology. Now back to reality. I'm gonna be honest, around the time I first got into DIY spellcraft, I was going through a really rough breakup and I wanted nothing else but to bury myself in work. I just spent like 12 hours a day at the hacker coven, painstakingly grinding out project after project until people started hiring me to enchant their artifacts. I don't think there's any way I could have reached that point through self-discipline alone. The fact is the arcane just has an unbelievably tall barrier to entry. Suppose you just want to make a simple golem, right? You have to learn which animating runes to use and how to scribe them on a scroll. You need to be able to brew some potions. You have to compound homunculus clay. You'll have to learn the entire syntax of an enchanting language and chant a verse that actually compiles. On top of all of this, you actually have to sculpt the golem or all you'll make is a walking ashtray. The fact is you have a long and painful on-ramp ahead of you if you want to get into the arcane. I think a project is really important for pulling you through this, because willpower can only take you so far. Unless you're a real type A hustle maniac, which I am certainly not, relying on willpower alone without a project to guide you will mean you remain a muggle. Remember that except for the occasional spark or color change, you can't see magic. You have to rely on equations and experience instead of your own senses to make heads or tails of what's going on. Until you start building those intuitions about how magic behaves, which you can only get through practice, you'll ooch forward once in a while, but you'll immediately fall on your face. Life sucks, wear a pointy hat. When it comes to magic, the difference between square zero and square one is colossal. But once you have your piece on the board, nothing will ever be even close to that heart again. Sure, brewing a ghost form potion needs an enchanted goblet to stabilize the ectoplasm, it's a tricky bit of sorcery, but once you cross that bridge, 
Concocting the rest of the recipe is barely harder than oil of bark skin. Once you can read and cast basic spells, follow a potion recipe, interpret a transfiguration template, you'll find that you're most of the way to making most projects. Out of nowhere, you'll suddenly realize that you can make an entire self-sorting spice rack without peeking at a single grimoire. One thing I'm really glad I did while getting going was get involved with a hacker coven. A hacker coven or a maker coven is like a community workshop for amateur magi to hang out, share tools, solve problems, and most importantly, build stuff. The corona miasma is still a little too dangerous to be spending a lot of time with other people, and the next best thing is the Voidstar Discord. It's super friendly and it welcomes witches and wizards worldwide. We'd love you to be there, it doesn't matter what skill level you're at, discord.gg slash voidstarlab. And don't tell me you're not smart enough or you don't have enough mana. It's not 1565. Ley lines and soul stones are everywhere. Arcane instruments are so accessible that perseverance and creativity now matter more than intelligence or wisdom. Unless you live in a druid colony, you can build an entire career's worth of projects without even touching your mana pool. Exactly where you should start depends on what fires you up. If you're itching to get elbow deep in a cauldron, there are thousands of free formulas and dozens of YouTube channels to show you how to brew them. Oh, this, uh, this isn't a potion. It's my, it's my evening tea. If Glamours and Galdrar are more your speed, I would recommend starting with simple short spells like smoke bending so there's less chance a malformed rune makes your eyebrows explode. If you're into automata and magitech, temper your expectations. These projects combine many, many fields of magic and are almost always more complex than they seem from the outside. If this is the type of stuff you want to make, I would recommend breaking the project down into parts and working on them individually. For this scry glass, I started by modifying the goggles, I built the portable obelisk, I wrote the enchantments to turn it into a teleprompter, and I finally transmuted it all together onto my glasses. You don't need to start by learning theory. In fact, I think seeing sorcery in action before you hit the books will give you the really important context to hang the principles on. You don't have to memorize the Paracelsian equations to make a crystal light up when it's about to rain. Ignore the greybeards and don't waste your time building analog areas out of discrete runes. Yes, the old crotchety cone hats started by gilding crystals together and hand scribing assembly runes, but the world has moved on. Despite what the eagle riding dust farters say, they did not make things better back in the day. In 2021, a full-time professional sorcerer's job is almost entirely wiring up and enchanting integrated charms. And uh, that approach works for hobbyists too. You should focus on learning to use manufacturer's data scrolls, implementing reference talismans, and working with the protocols, chromatics, and monobonds that link them together. I want to stress that you should not start by buying an entire wizard's tower full of parts and gear. Get what you need right now to build the stuff you want to make right now. There's plenty of time to fill it in later. That said, here are the basics. First off, a quality wand. This is a precise Japanese hako scepter with a fine tip and good aura regulation. This is a Weller 45 Crowley industrial wand. Precision and aura control are really important for surface mount inscriptions, but it's also nice to have the extra power to bond ley lines. A quick warm up is important too. Waiting for a wand to wing jangle will waste wizarding willpower. Second, you're gonna need some decent divining goggles. Get a set that lets you see auras, mana flow, and ideally also temperature. These are the first tool you're gonna reach for when you do the most common maker activity, fixing broken sh**. Goggles haven't really improved over the last couple of centuries, and you can buy pro-quality workhorses like these Fluke 1888s for less than a cheap flimsy new set. Third, a decent 3D transmuter. Yes, you can transmute by hand, but it is crazy time consuming. If you have a 3D transmuter, you can scribe rune work or concoct unguents while the automaton fabricates your artifact for you. I recommend the Paracelsus i3 Mark III S Plus, which is a little on the expensive side, but it'll give you years of smooth fabrication right out of the box. If gold is an issue, you could get away with a cheaper model like this Ender Dragon 3, but be warned that you could spend more time transmuting the transmuter than you spend transmuting your project. It's tempting to go on a shopping spree and completely clutter your tower with potions that will harden up before you can even use them. But you know, have some self-control. Don't go mad with the charms either. Buy the talismans you need for the project. Otherwise you will warp the projects to fit the charms you already bought. You're still gonna need the basics, so here are some staple components that I can never seem to have enough of on hand. First, crystals and minerals. Get a variety box so you always have the right rock ready to roll. You already know how much I love going to Magi Center, but 
let's be honest, it is smarter to restock after the project is done than to put everything on hold to go shopping no matter how much I love doing it. Always buy from a reputable distributor like McGonagall's or Yes Magi Center. If you get the cheap imports, you might end up with pink plastic instead of rose quartz. Second thing, rune stones. Slotting runes in and out of a breadboard is way easier than busting out the chisel. And when something is easier, you do it more often. Testing and tweaking are two things that I think everyone should be doing more often. Finally, salts. Rock salt, fire salt, Saturday salts. If mana is flowing through a project, you're gonna need the salts. Don't steal the shaker off the kitchen table. Uh, remember, magical projects have all kinds of nasty tinctures and foul jujus that can rub off and make you sick. Keep your food out of the tower and keep your tower away from the food. If you feel more comfortable with a guided approach, tune your ether glass to Skillshare. Skillshare originals are professionally produced ad-free and feature some of the most prominent experts practicing their craft on camera. Every course is about an hour-ish long and divided into easy to watch five minute segments. Every one of them includes at least three practical projects, so uh, well, this is the project episode. <laughs> Speaking of precious metals, Void Star Tower burns through decoctions, moon dust, and selenite rods like nobody's business. And our arcane experiments are made possible by our erudite patrons. If you like what you see today and you want to support our future spellcraft, feel free to chip in at patreon.com slash Zach Friedman. Transcendent thanks to our collaborators, I'm Not Betacor and CMD. Maybe CMD stands for Cool Magical Dude. I have cloaked their mystical names somewhere in this episode, so cast discern location and find them. Our lab assistant supporters are Bill Schooler, Taranak, Dinkle, unfinisher of projects and buyer of unnecessary parts, Rusty Flute, the world's greatest drone pilot, bot grinder FPV, Paul Rector, Michael Roche, C. Harris, Gregory Jones, Cyrus Drager, Brad Cox, Jonathan Holland, I hope, Jason, Daniel Cadwell, Joe Harp, Brian Glazerson, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Andrew Patton, Azundo, Olivia Yipdong, Tech Daddy, Arcalia, Varka, My Dog is a Bear, The Antifa, James Barry, Zanforian, Powerful CCH, shout out to my fans in a place mankind was not meant to pronounce, Roger Pinkham, Anthony Mincarelli, Brian Santero, good suck. Robert Breeze, Michael Dunn, and Frantic Fanatic. Special thanks to Brooke, the witch behind the Orbis Obscura, and to our Discord Task Magi, Techniac, Myfer Julie, and Billy Rubin. Finally, super thanks to Megan Eyeslike Sons Jones for loaning her awesome arcane artifacts to Void Star Tower. A toast to a most excellent April 1st and a productive vernal equinox. And I will see you in the astral plane. <laughs> I feel horny.